So we're coming up on the end of She-Hulk. We got one more episode until the whole season is actually over. And we finally got Daredevil. It's about freaking time. It only took us until almost literally the last episode to finally get some Daredevil action. They held it off for a pretty good time and now we finally got to see him on the screen again. Now they have him in his comic book accurate suit. Honestly, the more I looked at it, the more I thought, wow, it kind of looks very ugly. Well, that's my personal opinion and a lot of you are probably gonna hate on that opinion and a lot of you may probably agree with that but the good thing is that it's his first suit and that his suit will most likely change in daredevil born again or in an mcu film he'll show himself on the big screen in a different suit who knows who cares he's finally here but it is time to give you guys the finale theory on what i think could possibly happen now on thursday we will be seeing the final episode of she hulk and it's going to kind of wrap up everything that we have had questions about and a lot of us feel that we already have the answers to those questions but it's marvel they have a lot of twists and turns in their story but before i get into that theory let's just give you guys a quick reminder of what happened a little bit of a breakdown right here I have took the liberty of writing it down myself because I have very short term memory and it's very hard for me to just retain all that information and then give it to you guys again. So you see me looking out to the right, I'm kind of reading what I wrote down. All right, so here's a quick breakdown of She-Hulk episode eight. We start off with an introduction to Leapfrog who is explaining to Jen why he needs to file a lawsuit against the manufacturer Luke Jacobson for a faulty suit. Luke Jacobson is the person who makes all the superhero clothes. Luke chooses to file against Leapfrog with a special lawyer of his own, Daredevil himself, Matt Murdock, and ends up winning the case against Jen and Leapfrog because Leapfrog kind of, you know, gave himself away that he used jet fuel, even though Luke Jacobson said you are not supposed to use jet fuel, so you kind of dug your own grave there, sir. Later, Jen gets a call from Leapfrog stating that someone is attacking him. Jen then suits up in her super like suit that Luke Jacobson made for her. She meets up with Leapfrog where he said he would be and we find out that he was being attacked by Daredevil who appears in his yellow and red suit that resembles his original suit in the comics. Jen assumes he's the bad guy and after a short battle she finds out he is actually Matt. And he tells her Leapfrog kidnapped Luke. Both Matt and Jen go to the lily pad, Leapfrog's hideout where Leapfrog is hiding with Luke Jacobson. Daredevil delivers another badass hallway fight scene. It was a little less, you know, it was, it was more toned down. He was a little bit more brutal in the Netflix series, but hey, we may see him go to more of that brutal fighting in Daredevil Born Again, but we'll see. She-Hulk drops and finishes the backup goons and they make their way down the hall to finish off the rest of the goons and free Luke Jacobson as Leapfrog injures himself trying to escape out the window. Breaks both of his legs and it's pretty tragic. After Matt and Jen hook up back at her place, and the next morning Nikki shows up to help Jen prepare for the gala because Jen Walter is one lawyer of the year. Jen mentions that the episode feels like it's finished but there may be a twist coming up while suggesting the twist could be there's another Hulk but this one is red. A clear reference to Red Hulk from the comics right after we get another Wolverine reference with Nikki jumping into frame with a familiar pose and makes up products in between her fingers mimicking Wolverine's claws. I think this is if I'm not mistaken the third reference we've had of Wolverine. At the gala Hulk King interrupts the award ceremony and exposes Jen on a large scale with anger and she tears it down causing fear and havoc through the building and the episode ends with a raging she-hulk being held by the dodc so that is kind of a really quick breakdown of what episode 8 was all about we got to finally see matt murdoch back in action blind and still kicking ass and we got to see leapfrog the guy who plays leapfrog but we still haven't found out who hulk king is yet and a lot of you can probably make the assumption that todd is the Hulk King. Here's my theory on Todd being the mastermind behind Hulk King and Intelligentsia. In episode 4, Jen opens up to dating as She-Hulk and goes on several dates. One of these dates, it introduces Todd who comes off being a bit obsessed with She-Hulk and her powers and asks her weird questions such as, is your skin impenetrable, even by vibranium, which he proceeded to state he wished he had some and then called her a specimen. At the end of episode six, we find out that Intelligentsia was spying on Jen through Josh, who we find out is working for Hulk King at the end of episode seven. In episode eight, we're jumping through a lot of episodes here. Jen meets up with Todd at a restaurant under the impression that it's strictly business. Todd mentions that he purchased a real vibranium Wakandan spear 
at an auction. Again, he does mention in episode 4 that he wished he had vibranium, and at the end of episode 6, we saw a man replace one of the needles on a syringe with a large, possibly vibranium needle due to the Wrecking Crew failing at their first attempt with a needle that probably, most likely wasn't vibranium. This could be that Todd could have bought this spear from the black market, the same place Claw would have been selling the vibranium he used to steal in Age of Ultron and in the first Black Panther film. Or an underground auction like the one we saw in the Hawkeye series. And melt it down into a needle strong enough to penetrate She-Hulk's skin and retrieve her blood. He also does mention that whoever he purchased the spear from wanted it back. Who could that possibly be? Jen then realizes Todd's intentions as he tries to make a move and leaves him at the restaurant. And she charges him for the whole hour, so she probably slapped on a pretty big bill in his face for that move. Later, Jen sees Todd at the gala. Todd ends up being wherever She-Hulk is at some point in the season. In episode 5 at the law firm that Jen works at, and in episode 8 at the gala, and he always gives her a weird look. Later during the award ceremony, while Jen is on stage, the screen behind her is hacked with the Hulk King logo and then proceeds to expose Jen. With a hidden camera video that Josh had set up in the room the night that her and Josh, you know, started making love. This raged She-Hulk into tearing down the screen and causing everyone in the building to panic, all except a group of men in all black and face coverings over them, who were recording the outrage as well. This is an obvious indicator that these are the same people that have thrown out all of her information and other recordings on the Intelligentsia website. This one guy does resemble a bit of Todd with the choice of clothing and hairstyle in his clear fascination with She-Hulk, causing him to be distracted while his group ran off before he did. She-Hulk wasn't able to confront him as she caught him because of the DODC pointing their weapons at her. Could Todd be revealed as the Hulk King in the final episode of She-Hulk? To be honest, it most likely is him. It seems pretty obvious, but here's the thing about Marvel is they want to put the obvious in our face and then be like, ha, gotcha, I fooled ya. So this could most likely be Todd. This could most likely not be Todd. I don't see why it wouldn't be Todd because, you know, all signs kind of point to how much he is obsessed with She-Hulk here. But what are your thoughts? What do you think? Leave a comment down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. We try to post as much as we can. We have a ton of YouTube shorts that you guys can go check out. All things Marvel, all things pop culture there that you can expand your knowledge on. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and peace out.